afternoon. We, often, we know Tim Brumfield. We know Tim Brumfield. Uh, we don't know him in uh, all the hats that he wears. So it's a privilege to invite him to speak today um, as preacher of the day. So Father Tim, come forward, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I want to thank Father Ben for inviting me once again to speak today, a day in which we celebrate and honor a trifecta of holidays and occasions. Happy Father's Day to all our incredible fathers who have led us and taught us, supported us, and helped us. Faith of our fathers, living still in spite of dungeon, fire, and sword, Faith and prayer shall win all nations unto thee, and through the truth that comes from God, mankind shall then indeed be free. We will love with both friend and foe in all our strife, and preach thee too, as love knows how, by kindly deeds and virtuous life. As we sang this powerful text this morning, we were reminded of our African ancestors as we celebrate Juneteenth independence, whose faith carried them through the horrific period of persecution and slavery. As we also commemorate Gay Pride Month, these words remind us too of the faith it takes to love one another through all strife and tribulation. I'm so incredibly excited about the renovation and the restoration which is underway in our beautiful sanctuary. All the exposed pipes of the Oregon are safely tucked away in a climate controlled storage unit not far from here. And the chambers and Winchest are sealed up to prevent any damage from the construction. I've already been in to test the acoustics and I must say that I had tears in my eyes. I sang a few notes and it sounds like a cathedral. Truly breathtaking, and I can't wait to make music in our newly created space. I would like to offer my personal thanks to everyone who has given so generously to make this dream a reality. And I know that you'll want to continue to give as we are still not quite there with the final number of dollars needed. Now with renovation, comes change. Change is often exciting. However, for some it can be challenging to accept. Change can bring about feelings of worry and angst, bitterness and resentment. We become comfortable with that to which we are accustomed. And change upsets our comfort zone. I want to shed some light on what some significant changes in the past meant for those at the time and what positive change can mean for us in our futures. A young minister friend of mine who lives in Lexington, Kentucky, Jackson Campbell, recently posted on Facebook about the effects of one significant change within certain churches here in America, which occurred over the latter part of the 19th century and the first few decades of the last century. As a kid growing up in rural Kentucky, I knew of these historic churches and learned early on about their turbulent past and the changes that had taken place as many of them still stand today. I'm speaking of buildings, church buildings, which had double entries. A set of doors on opposite sides which were designed to separate us, to separate men and women as they arrived. Many also had a separate door on the side or in the back to separate those who were in bondage, those who were enslaved. Jackson goes on to say, I want us all to see glimpses of how our interpretation of God and scripture have changed when we went back to the text 
and realized we'd been reading it wrong the whole time. Can you imagine the upheaval that occurred when these churches began to unite men and women and include people of color? They lost membership, suffered from isolation, and were ridiculed, as Jackson says, by those who couldn't bear the sight of their church, including those whom they wished to exclude. Some had to shut their doors, and yes, some ceased to operate because change was too difficult for many to accept. We read in today's Gospel of Matthew that Jesus was all about change, complete transformation. Jesus commissions his disciples to go out into the world and proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near after seeing not only those who were sick and diseased, but also those who were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Jesus goes on to say, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be as wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Be aware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures, the one who endures to the end, will be saved. Wow. Jesus knew that change would not be easy. Bringing the good news of the kingdom would be difficult. Today, the harvest is still very plentiful, and the laborers are still quite few. We are the laborers charged to bring the love of Christ into a broken world. We are charged with being the change. We are charged with helping to end racial injustice, homophobia and bigotry, and the persecution of groups who are marginalized and demonized by society simply because they're different from the mainstream norm. Juneteenth and Gay Pride together bring to the forefront such shared issues as confronting injustice, inequality, intolerance, separation from others, non-acceptance, bigotry, and violence. One question that inevitably gets asked is, why do we need such movements as Gay Pride, Black Lives Matter, or Juneteenth, or women's liberation? They exist out of the need to bring attention to the fact that change needs to occur. Isn't this what Jesus was telling his disciples? Persecution in all forms stems from fear. The fear of others, the fear of the change which might come through our acceptance of others. And the worst fear of all, losing control. We've allowed ourselves to be separated, to be divided into warring groups. We've allowed the placement of labels on those with certain political, social, or economic ideas which may be different from our own. We label those with a different racial heritage or a different sexual identity. We've seen a dangerous rise in radical violence, anti-Semitical violence, and a violence 
against the LGBTQ community. Just this month in Corbin, Kentucky, at a gay pride parade, two Ku Klux Klan members who actually showed the crowd their KKK membership cards, I kid you not, pulled out guns and threatened those in the parade shouting, I want to rip your effing face off and shove it up your effing you know what. One of these people was a former government employee of the city of Corbin and the other had run for district constable in Laurel County. Do you want to know the scary part? The police let them go. And back to the gospel. Then Jesus says to his disciples, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. I say to all those who have endured discrimination, bigotry, defamation, injustice, ridicule, inequality, and yes, even violence, simply for being yourself, for being you, do not despair. We must continue to be who we are, to live our lives as God made us to be. We must all be the facilitators of change. We must work diligently and earnestly to cultivate a society in which we are one with each other, without labels and without division. We must cultivate a society where empathy for one another is nurtured and fostered. We must cultivate a society where love is in action all around us. Love will win every time. Jesus said, God is love. As Father Ben said a couple of weeks ago, God is a verb. So is love. Loving others is not always easy. We must overcome our own prejudices, our own lack of self-worth, and our feelings of insecurity. We must learn to accept others for who and what they are. I'm so very fortunate and so very proud to be a part of and work for a church which truly practices what it preaches. St. Gregory's welcomes everyone, and our new slogan, you are welcome here, says it all. I'd like to offer a shout out to our own parish administrator, Kristen Cheney, for finding this incredible symbol of acceptance which extends to everyone as we strive to be a house of prayer for all people. When I was on tour with the Paul Winter Consort in Japan recently, we performed a new piece of music entitled Universal Symphony, so named to coincide with the completion of a work of art by the artist Akihiko Toto, which is entitled Universal Symphony. This new work of art was commissioned by the late Hiroko Koyama, who was the founder of the Miho Museum and of the Shumei Center, where our tour took place, located in the beautiful majestic mountains outside Kyoto. This incredible work of art is meant to embody her prayers for world peace, and at the center, is a blue circle created by the fingerprints of 22,690 people. 22,690 people who joined her from around the world in prayers for peace. The energy emoting from this work is truly overwhelming. And as I stood there gazing upon it, I had a renewed sense of hope and promise. I realized that together, 
we can overcome war and poverty. That together we can stamp out racial inequality and injustice. That together we can stamp out homophobia and sexual discrimination. That together we can have world peace. That together we can save our environment. We can with God. We can with love. God bless. Amen.